We're going to uh, pretty much proceed to putting a little uh, pretty much indent where the crack is actually leading to on one side and the other. So we're going to do it this one right here. Let's see if I can still get my drill there. Let's get my drill here. There we go. Try catching an angle here. We don't want to go too deep, we just want to go enough where uh, it's pretty much, pretty much stop. Again, this is aluminum so it can go all the way. There we go, we got that one indent now to stop the crack on this side. And then again, we already did the other one here to stop the crack on this side. So we took a little small drill bit there just to make sure we uh, capture the both ends of the crack. And this will prevent it from cracking anymore, uh, relieves the pressure. So whatever pressure is coming, forcing this gap again, it will pretty much alleviate by this uh, indent right there that we did. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start preparing it for our JB weld. Again, it costs $5.68 with tax, probably still less than $6. Uh, we got the original. I always recommend the original unless you really need the emergency one. It, it pretty much uh, will bond quicker and it's actually cheaper by 50 cents. So uh, if you can just go with the original one, you have 24 hours to wait, just do it. It's, it's gonna be a better cure. And here's the instruction that gives you in the back. So it's pretty uh, pretty easy. You can see there's the instruction right there. One, two, three to four steps. Okay, we're not gonna sand it down. We got some good sandpaper, some fine one. Uh, sand grade 2000. There you go, you can see it, there we go. Yeah, we're just gonna cut a little bit, uh, notch from it. Then we're gonna go ahead and give it a sand down. Sand down from the same time. So we're gonna open the sandpaper up. I'll take one sheet out. Scissors here are gonna cut it a little bit. Actually, there's two of them, they're very thin, so we don't need one. So, get some pairs of scissors. And we're just working with a little space here, we don't need a lot. And then we're gonna also need some kind of like um, popsicle sticks or some kind of wood uh, padding so we can actually put our mold in here. Okay, we got that. Now it's time to go ahead and just work it. I fold in half some more so I can get a little bit more leverage. Well, again, all you want to do is just take the oxidation out. You're not trying to eat the metal. Or aluminum is considered some kind of metal. Even though it says here on the um, JB Weld, that it does metal and everything. Consider yourself the aluminum is part of a metal. You know, you have iron, you have stainless steel. Those are all considered metal elements. So instead of them putting all a bunch of verbiage of everything metal, they just pretty much put metal application. There we go. Okay, great. There we go. See, it's sanding it nicely. We're starting to see the raw side of it now. Pretty shiny, isn't it? Let me go if I can get the resolution better now. You can see it where I'm shining it here. There you go. Can't get closer than that. You can help take a pair of your scissors edge. A little bit more reinforcement there. It's good to actually uh, crack in this angle because uh, even though it's on the outside, uh, the inside might not be damaged. I think we did a check on it on the bearings and uh, we don't see a crack on there. I think it's just the outside part that was um, bending out of shape more than inside. Inside didn't, didn't look like the crack went inside, so that's a good thing. Again, this is where your gear oil is, so you want to be really careful. 
uh, having it leak this area, but isn't crack always at the places where you don't really need it? If it was to crack somewhere here next to the CVT area right here, this whole case area, it would have been fine, but it always has a crack where there's oil. But again, that's why the components are there, uh, the gears and stuff. So we're giving a good sand down. It's going to have a little gray tar looking on it. That can be very pretty, but you know what? It's going to do the trick and it's going to make a a lot, heck, a lot better in the long run. We're we're aiming for performance aesthetic as well, but we can you know mold as much as we can. We could probably even paint over the JB weld. I mean, it really comes to worse. But the main thing is just I want to get this on there, and we're gonna have gravity and use a little bit to our advantage. So we're gonna tilt it, and hopefully the JB weld will get into that little crack area as well. But we want to sand it down really good that area we're working with because the oxidation. Not what we want. There we go. I think it's time to flip it around now. I think we can use pretty much all we can here from it. You can see here. Fairly fine grade sandpaper. Probably gonna do this for about five more minutes. I'm just gonna sand it down really nicely. I'm not going to make you guys watch me do it entirely, so let me go and pause it, and I'll be back in about five minutes. Okay, we got to clean as much as we can here. You can see on the other side as well. Uh, we pretty much just kind of pretty much shave off the oxidation buildup along the line, as well as some of the, the might be the aluminum uh, casting kind of uh, paint. So that way we get everything else cleaned out to prepare the JB weld on there. And now we can hit this with a little bit of brake cleaner. I believe that might actually even further uh, get some. It's sort of brake cleaner. Pretty much, it actually removes paint too. So I think it's good that if there's any kind of a paint residue or anything, we can get it inside the cracks with brake cleaner much better than we would by just <laughs> air. So let's go and get some brake cleaner on it. Oh. We'll let this prep up before we uh, apply it. There we go. There we go. You can see how the brake clean just takes all that residue quickly. That's the, that's, that's, that's the stuff we don't want to uh, get onto our our JB Weld uh, compound. We want to just take it all out. Get from the side too as well. force it in there and it dries pretty fast so if it gets into the gear a little bit it just dries it up real quickly again we're hoping the crack doesn't go further than gear take a nice clean cloth microfiber here we'll wipe it down nope oh, it's almost slipping here and we're gonna have it in the incline position that way the JB weld actually gets into the cracks that's what we're aiming for here We can also get this welded too, so that would be another option. But let's see how the JB weld does. $6 versus a $60 job. Do it yourself, $6 compound. Okay. Looks good. Okay, it's time to mix our, our JB weld here. This area looks really nicely clean. There we go. Okay, let's let the let it dry out a little bit. While we're doing that, we're gonna go ahead and mix in our JB Weld. All you need again is a popsicle stick or some sort of stick to spatula it on there. So let's see if I can prepare one. Yeah. That way you can dispose of it. Let me go ahead and try to find uh, some kind of a, a wooden paddle or some sort so we can spatula the JB weld on there. There we go, let me put this pause for a second. Okay, I didn't find a, any kind of a popsicle stick, but I think a fork, a plastic fork, would just do just nicely. I got a brand new plastic fork here. And also got a little um, plastic cap from, you know, a package. So we can use that to put some of our JB weld. You want to distribute these evenly. Uh, so. We, uh, Pretty much for our application here, we're not going to even use more than a cap size uh, for both of them. So just a little squeeze, that's it. Right, let's go ahead and 
get our JB Weld ready here. Oh yeah, open it up. This one, one of them's for hardening, and the other one's for, uh, I guess, this is the, the steel. So there's the red ones for hardening. See right there, it says it. Hardening, hardener, and that one's the steel itself for the compound. So JB Weld, liquid form, no torch required. Amazing product. Okay, let me put this down. That we can see me mix it up and apply it. Angle there. Okay. okay. I'm going to go and open this one up. My best to just cut it through with a scissor from the front end. Pull one out. This is the pretty much the steel compound. And this is the hardener on it. Okay, so I'm going to use this right here. We're going to go ahead and mix half and half. We're going to use the lid. The lid pretty much uh, is the puncture area. So you can see it from here. There you go. So we're going to go and use the lid here to puncture it. And there's a little sharp edge right there. There you go. It's already punctured now. White stuff comes out. You can see here it comes out quite a bit. It almost comes out on its own. Okay, that's all we want. Just gonna spread it across. Glad I can use a little clear one that way you can see the bottom what it looks like. That's it. We're gonna seal it back. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing with the black one. This is actually the steel byproduct itself. Let it come out on its own. This one looks like it wants to come out even more. Okay, there you go. We got the ratio we needed. Okay, then we're going to go and take our plastic fork. You can see here. That's the compound. Make sure you know plastic debris is brand new, so safe for eating. It should be clean. Okay, there we go. Let's give it a twirl. Let's stir it all up. See, it becomes that kind of a kind of a tar looking now. Okay. Mix it really well. Spreading very thin onto the covers now. We don't want that. We don't want it to go further out. We need to Make sure we grab it for our application here. Okay. And then since we got all of our stuff sanded, now it's time to apply it. There's no going back pretty much. The only way to go back is to almost uh, sand it down clean. So, so I'm going to go into the areas. Maybe apply it on. Hang on. There we go. We get the resolution there for you. Okay, we're going to start with our cracks. We're going to pretty much put in our crack area and we're going to bring it up. There we go. Even though it's, oh boy. Even though it's attached, this stuff goes on like, almost like toothpaste. Or like, a little lighter than toothpaste, almost like cream. Well, it depends what kind of toothpaste, right? But yeah. We're going to wipe off the areas that we don't want it to apply on very quickly. There we go. Grab some more there. Make sure we control the other area. See, there it goes. See, that's enough right there. Now we just gotta mold it to where we need it to be going to. This is your JB Weld. So we still got a few more here. We can establish from quite a bit. So we just kind of like cake it on there, or frost it. Just 
kind of get a feel for it. Play for around smooth it in areas. Let it hard for about 24 hours. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to cover this whole area right here. Sort of with JB Weld. Try to give all the adjacent areas to some supporting JB Weld. Try to work the cracks. You can see I'm paddling it in, hoping that it goes into the crack. And I'll show you this side in just a second how far I'm at. I'm getting good at this here. Almost like a good, if you're a pastry chef, this will probably be much easier for you. 